This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show are the Fnatic Club Sport Pedals V3 Inverted. Now, these look very similar to the standard V3 pedals, but they are turned upside down, or at least two-thirds of them are turned upside down. Now, to be honest, they are a bit more than just a standard set of V3 pedals. These do come fully loaded. They come with the damper kit pre-installed, and that's a $70 upgrade over the standard V3 pedals. Now, before I get this show going, before I get things started, I have to give Fnatic some credit. They really changed the sim racing world with the introduction of the Club Sport pedals at $299. Before that, we sim racers, all we really had to choose from were plastic, lifeless pedals that came with a Logitech, a Thrustmaster, or even the 911 bodied wheels from Fnatic. The other option was to go the custom route, maybe something like a set of Canon pedals that it would set you back $1,000 or more very easily. But with the Club Sport pedals, they offered a mostly made of metal, heavy duty, very realistic pedal set at a reasonable price. And ever since then, the Club Sport pedals have continued to evolve until we get to the V3 inverted version, which go for $499. And included with the pedals in the box are a full set of rounded foot pads, a third pedal extension, a USB cable, a RJ12 cable, a heavier gas spring, and its guides stabilizer feet, the hardware for them, and some lithium grease. The Club Sport Pedals V3 Inverted are a beautiful set of pedals, and as you can see, they're quite a bit more to look at than the standard V3 pedals are. They are made completely of metal, a black anodized aluminum to be more specific. The base is made up of two heavy-duty side rails with three steel bars between them that create the width and allow for the gas pedal floor-mounted pivot. This also holds the heavy duty heel plate and the control box concealed underneath it. This much is all based on the standard V3 pedals. And from there is where things turn upside down. The inverted version have a new heavy duty side pieces of metal that extend up from the base. There is another set of crossbars running between them and a top plate with the Fnatic logo. These cross braces provide the mount and pivot point for both the brake and the clutch pedals, allowing them to hang down into the range with the gas pedal. The top bar holds the pedal arm itself, while the bottom bar holds the brakes load cell, the damper kit, and the clutch's cam mechanism. With the gas and brake pedal having their own shaker motor or vibration device on each arm. The pedal arms are built of aluminum and are a box shape for additional strength. In the case of the brake and clutch, it is the standard Fnatic pedal face made of aluminum and it has multiple mounting holes. The gas pedal is also made of aluminum and is long in length and smooth in its finish. Each pedal arm is mounted to the pedals with a brass bushing that will provide a long lasting smooth movement from the pedal arm. And for those of you not hard mounting this into the rig, there are these little feet or stabilizer legs that stick down off the back and prevent it from tipping over when the pedals are being pressed. Now on the electronic side of things, the Fnatic Club Sport pedals V3 inverted feature magnetic Hall effect sensors to measure the movement of the gas and clutch pedal. These are 12-bit sensors and offer 4,096 points of resolution through the pedal's total throw. Hall effect sensors have no wearing parts like a potentiometer and should last for a very long time. The brake pedal uses a load cell to measure the braking pressure applied by your foot. This load cell is a 90 kilogram version and is faster reading than previous versions of the Club Sport pedals. The pedals can be used as a standalone set via the USB cable or they can be plugged into any of the Fnatic wheelbases via the RJ12 cable. And when plugged into the Fnatic wheelbase, the pedals will maintain the console compatibility of the wheelbase you're using. So if you have a PlayStation compatible wheelbase, this is still gonna work with it as long as it's plugged into that wheel. Now let's talk about some of the dimensions and the adjustability of the Fnatic Club Sport Pedals V3 inverted. And you can see the overall dimensions are very similar to the Club Sport standard V3 model and measures in at 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters front to back at the base and 17 inches or 43 centimeters, including the upper framing that does extend. And going left to right, it's 13 and a half inches or about 34 centimeters. 
They also maintain the same mounting hole positions as the standard Club Sport pedals. So if your rig is pre-drilled for Fanatic pedals, it's gonna work with the inverted version as well. Now the biggest difference in dimension is the overall height with the inverted version coming in at about 12 and a half inches tall or 32 centimeters. And as I mentioned, and as you can see, they are quite a bit taller than the standard version. And that's something that will have to be taken into consideration if you're trying to mount these into a rig with a smaller foot box area. Now the pedal faces end up being about six and a half inches or 16 and a half centimeters from the leading edge or front of the pedals. The gas pedal, which is floor mounted, extends up about nine and a half inches or 25 centimeters and is two and a quarter inches or six centimeters wide. The gas pedal when pressed will travel about three and a half inches or nearly nine centimeters from off throttle to full throttle. The brake and clutch pedals are both the same dimensions. They each stand about eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters above the heel plate each pedal face is three and a half inches or nine centimeters tall by three and a half inches or nine centimeters wide. The clutch pedal will travel about four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters from off to full throw. Now the brake pedals movement will actually be affected by what setting you choose on the resistance for the damper. That's something we're gonna come back to in a minute but at its lightest setting, it will move about three inches or almost eight centimeters from off to full braking. And with a firm setting on the brake, the travel is limited to about an inch and a half or four centimeters. The Fanatic Club Sport pedals V3 inverted are also extremely adjustable and each pedal has its own set of changes that you can make to really dial them in, starting off with the gas pedal. The throttle pedal spring can be changed out fairly easily. The pre-installed spring is the lightweight one, but that can be changed out for the stiffer spring in a handful of steps. First, we remove the two bolts at the back of the gas pedal where it connects to the back cross brace. This allows the back cover to be removed. We can then push it in slightly and rotate it upwards so that we can pull off the metal box. We can now remove and change the spring and then reassemble it the way it came out. And we could actually change out that throttle pedal for the rounded one on the extender. If we were gonna go with the rounded ones, it would make all three pedals match, but I happen to be a pretty big fan of the long skinny throttle pedal that they have on this set now. For the comfort or fit side of things, the pedal face can be mounted in different spots. It can be moved up, down, left, or right via the holes drilled into the pedal face as well as the three different holes on the pedal arm. Also for comfort or the ergonomic side of things is the extension for the pedal face. It can be tilted to change the angle that the face is resting at. For me, I found that I like to rotate the bottoms away a little bit more than normal. And then finally on the comfort side of things is that you can change the rounded pedal face if you prefer. It mounts through the holes drilled into it and then onto the two or three holes of the pedal arm. When it comes to the feeling of the pedal or the way it moves, we have a few more adjustments, starting with that resistance that I mentioned earlier. There's a cylinder with an elastomer bumper within it. There is also a dial on the brake that will adjust the resistance of the pedal as it is pressed in. It is easy as turning the dial in or out until you have your desired resistance. This will also affect the travel of the pedal and you will want to recalibrate it if you adjusted it here. For even more precise resistance control, there's a brake performance kit with additional elastomer bumpers to really dial in the feel. And we will cover those tuning options in another show. The other adjustment is the damper where you can change the dial setting of the damper of the brake. There is a small Allen screw that locks down the knob on the end of the damper. Loosen this screw and then turn the dial until the desired release speed is found. Then tighten the Allen screw. And then finally the clutch. Like the brake, I can move this pedal face around, left, right, up, down, anywhere I want with the mounting holes. I can also change the pivot point or the angle with the extension here as well. And that's about it for the clutch adjustments. Now let's move on to mounting these into our rig, which was actually very simple. It uses the standard four holes for the club sport pedals and most rigs will accommodate them. My R seat certainly did. Four bolts later, my pedals were ready to go. I went to the Fanatic website, downloaded the software, installed it, then I fired up the Fanatic software and allowed it to update the firmware on the pedals. 
the Club Sport pedals auto calibrate, but there are also overrides for custom calibration within that same software. Now comes the fun part. These are mounted on my rig, software is installed, time to get out on track and drive them. And the first time that I put my feet, well, these are my hands, the first time I put my feet on these pedals, the all metal design was very noticeable. If you're coming from a Logitech or a Thrustmaster set of pedals, this will feel foreign at first. The metal, ultra sturdy design builds confidence at first touch. The gas pedal is very snappy and solid. And if you hit it hard or soft, it moves freely under your foot. The light spring allows for very fast application of the throttle pedal. And at its full stroke, you're met with a rigid stopping point. There is no additional movement at this point. It is crystal clear that you have achieved full throttle. The overall travel of the gas pedal is a little less than I would have expected, but it does allow for enough movement to modulate the gas of the car. The pedal's movement is extremely smooth and it's easy to slide your foot on the pedal face. The brake pedal is by far the most complex and rightfully so because it's the most adjustable and it's really the most important when it comes to sim racing. For the Club Sport brake pedal, you have a couple of different things going on. The pedal travels very smoothly through its movement with very light resistance that continues to grow as the pedal gets pressed further in. Again, this resistance can be adjusted by moving the dial. Beyond that, there's the feeling or the flex of the load cell. The load cell is not only measuring the pressure being applied, but it is also creating part of the resistance that we are working with within the pedal. When I say working with, I really mean it. Through the urethane bumper and the load cell, there is a pressure that we are pressing against as it presses back on our foot. When dialed in, this can be used to modulate the brake in and out and create our own anti-lock braking for maximum braking on track. Instead of trying to brake by how far the pedal moved like a potentiometer, you are measuring how hard you press, just like a real brake pedal. The brake pedal does take a fair amount of pressure to fully apply, but can still be done with socks versus needing a driving shoe. With the bumper turned up to higher, the pressure required is quite a bit more and might even send you running for your shoes. Even with the pressure turned up, the pedal arm is rock solid and any resistance, any pressure, or any movement you are feeling is within the measuring device and the urethane bumper, not the pedal arm or the frame or anything in the Club Sport pedals flexing. When at its lighter settings, the overall throw of the pedal is more than I expected and a bit more than the standard set of Club Sport pedals. The clutch pedal also has a ton of travel and has its unique cam that creates a clutch plate release type of sensation. This allows for some smooth travel that is followed by the pedal freeing up at the leverage point and almost falling to the limit. And then upon release, it snaps back at you as if the forks of the clutch were springing it back into action. This is a pretty good feeling of a clutch pedal. The Fnatic Club Sport pedals V3 inverted were actually extremely easy to get used to and I didn't even have to think about it very much. I made a few very small adjustments. I lowered the faces and the angle of the brake and clutch pedal. I added some resistance to the brake and I had that natural feeling that made it just automatic for me right away. That was all it took to get these pedals to where I was very happy with them. The pedals immediately built confidence over stock pedals and they feel like they are built to last. Then came the next wave, a realization for me with these pedals. Not only was I using the load cell resistance, not only was I using the urethane bumper resistance to get a feel and really judge how far I was pressing the pedal, but this angle, the drop down angle, actually was doing something different for me. I found that when I pressed with my foot that I'd get about a certain distance and hit almost threshold braking. But if I needed more, if I need that, oh no, braking, that I gotta stop, lock them up kind of braking, I actually had to curve my foot a little more to press on the bottom of the pedal to even achieve that distance. It created a safety zone for me that I could really use when I got dialed in with these pedals. For me, this was a nice added touch of the drop down pedals beyond just looking cool. 
Now, I am not a heel-toe downshifting master by any means, and for me, the clutch in sim racing, for the most part, is something I use for pulling out of the pits, for doing burnouts, for doing donuts, or for recovering when I've spun out on the track. But for a lot of people in sim racing, sim racing is about recreating a real-life driving scenario, whether it be their street car, whether it be their race car, but getting things to the point where it's as close to one-to-one -one as possible is very important. In those cases, heel and toe shifting can be a critical part of sim racing. I did spend some time doing my hybrid version of this technique and found that the pedals work pretty well for it. That little extension on the lower portion of the gas pedal is perfect for my heel as I tilt my foot over the brake pedal. As I get ready to downshift, a flick of the heel and I get my RPM matching blip of the throttle. I also have the ability to adjust the brake pedal position to a spot that makes this better for my shoes or socks. For my testing, I had these pedals bolted down to my rig, but I also wanted to test out the stabilizer bars for those who might not be using a rig. With the hardware supplied with the pedals, I can bolt one to each rear side of the base and then put them down on the floor. In the end, I found the stabilizer bars were very effective at preventing the pedals from tipping over and they even add to the overall grip on most surfaces. I always prefer to mount or secure my pedals, but these do do a better job than most of staying still and staying on the ground. Now I did test out the shaker motors that are included on the gas and brake pedal. On the gas, it's going to start to spin or shake as soon as the rear end of the car is starting to slide. And for the brake, it's going to start to spin or shake as soon as you start to get wheel lockup. Now this will only work on the PC and it requires some third party software like SLI Manager Pro or Fanata LEDs to make it function. I will cover that in a future show but you can feel these little motors doing their job and that could be a great added feature later. So at this point, you've heard all of the details about the Fnatic Club Sport Pedals V3 inverted model. You've heard about their adjustability. You've heard about how they performed on track. But just to summarize, let's go ahead and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting things off with the good. And the first thing you're gonna notice about these pedals is their heavy duty aluminum construction. Great looking pedal set, realistic feel, highly adjustable, load cell brake pedal, high resolution sensors, smooth operation, built-in heel plate, built-in vibration motors, comes with rounded or flat pedal faces. Compatible with Fnatic wheels, even on the appropriate console. Works on most floors without hard mounting. And they're inverted. And I'm going to tell you, I think that's pretty cool, both in function and the way it looks. Now let's move on to the not so good. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I had a very hard time coming up with any flaws in this pedal set. I had a hard time finding anything that I couldn't rationalize or make an excuse for or justification for. So I really did have to go out on a limb to find a few things. And the first one being the holes on the brake pedal can be felt on my foot while pressing hard in socks. Hard to get all of the pedal faces lined up. Must use third-party software for the shaker motors and hard to access the mounting holes. And now onto the bottom line. I really enjoyed using these pedals. I found them to be a really good combination of aesthetic beauty and total function. Now, despite not needing drop-down pedals for sim racing, I did find them a nice change of pace for my feet or a different feel that was really nice. The added distance of travel and change of angle for the brake pedal gave me a new way of measuring pressure. And that was great for threshold braking. Now I've already seen some of the comments about these pedals online and I've seen some people who even said that they thought it was overpriced. But for me, I think if you work backwards on the price point, they actually come out being fairly fair. Let's start off with a set of Club Sport V3 pedals which are gonna go for $299. Then you add the damper kit that doesn't come with the V3 pedals, and that's an additional $70. 
So that really puts us at about $370, which is $130 short of the pedal price. So that gets us the whole side brackets and upper assembly to do the inverted pedals. All that is for $130. That includes the tooling, that includes the design time, and that includes all of the metal. And I think that's a pretty fair price. The other thing, when I compare this to other drop-down pedals that have been on the market, you might pay $130 or $150 for a mounting kit in order to actually have them if you don't have a rig that can hold the pedals. In addition to that, these already have the built-in heel plate, which is something that on a normal drop-down set is something that you're going to have to build for yourself anyway. Now in general, when using a plastic or stock set of pedals, I always use my socks when driving. If I even try to use shoes, I get that blind feeling and I can't feel or see anything on the pedal set. When I upgrade to a heavier set, I almost always use driving shoes for that extra added power. With the Club Sport pedals, I found them right on that line. With the lighter settings on the gas and on the brake, socks were no problem at all. But if I really stiffen things up, I might just want to go with shoes for that endurance, for that longevity, just to not get a sore foot, and I didn't have that blind feeling. And I also think about the amount of travel within the brake pedal, having that range of one and a half to three inches. I talk about sim racing and emulating real life driving. Having that ability to move the pedal from one and a half to three inches, change the stiffness, really allows you to get it dialed in and get it close to what that preconceived notion that you might have of what it should be, or if you're really trying to match a real life car. But for those looking for an ultra stiff, non-movement, F1 style brake pedal, this is much more like a GT or streetcar brake pedal. And one other thing I will mention, the pedals did come with a quick start guide and it has some good tips and instructions in it. But do yourself a favor, go to the Fanatic website and download the full manual. It has much more detailed instructions on how to do some of the adjustments on this pedal set. So in closing, I will say this one more time. I really enjoyed driving on these pedals. I had a very hard time finding any flaws or any reasons that would not make these the perfect pedals for the average sim racer. At this point, Fnatic really has this point in the market all to themselves, with Logitech and Thrustmaster making just generic pedals, stock pedals. Fnatic comes in with these. When I look at the high end, you're looking at $1,000 for all metal heavy duty pedals, and then Fnatic comes in with these. So whether you're talking about the V3 standard at $300, whether you're talking about the inverted version at $500, we are talking about the best bang for the buck pedals on the market. Well done, Fnatic. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Fnatic Club Sport Pedals V3 inverted model. I hope I have answered every question, showed you everything that you'd possibly want to know about these pedals. But if I did miss something, if you do have a question, I urge you to please email me at sean at thesimpit.com and I'll do my best to answer your question. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.